Okay, guys, welcome to the 4 Geeks Academy Boilerplate for WordPress. You can find it, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can find it here at 4 Geeks Academy Templates and Boilerplates. Basically, it's a starter for WordPress that we believe it's going to make your life a lot easier. First of all, we only believe in headless WordPress. We think the, the front end core of WordPress is too old to be used. So we would like to use it all the time as a headless API, basically, to take advantage of all the backend capabilities of WordPress, but trying to make it an API so that you can consume it with React, basically. So in this case, we have this boilerplate that it supports, uh, if you have PHP 7.2 or above, you can use it. 7.2.19 actually. Uh, it is compatible 100% with the WordPress CLI, so that means that you can use the entire WordPress uh, framework without even opening the WordPress admin, like a content manager. Basically, you will be a developer and you will be using WordPress 100% through the command line. Um, it supports also environmental variables. That's really amazing. Uh, I, I'm sure many of you guys understand what an environmental variable, variable is. But if you don't, you will fall in love with it because it's pretty cool. Um, it has a script, a badge script, that will allow you to install the WordPress in just one click. I'm going to be opening it in the meantime. I, in the meantime, I explain because uh, it's going to take a couple of minutes and I don't want to waste your time. So the first step will be to click here in the blue button or in the green one if you have the Gitpod plugin. If you don't have a plugin, don't worry, you can just click on this blue one. Just click on it and it will open a the boilerplate for you in Gitpod. You can also download it locally and clone the repository, but I would not recommend that because then you will have to install PHP, you will have to install MySQL. It's a lot of things and Gitpod is pretty fast. So you'll see that you can start working and coding in WordPress in just a few uh, minutes. I was explaining about all the features that the boilerplate has. So let me go back to that. So as I was saying, it has um, uh, one, one command that will let you install WordPress 100% without any intervention in just a couple of minutes. If you have worked with WordPress before, you'll see how installing it can be a little bit cumbersome sometimes. It's just too many steps. So with this script, you will avoid all that um, problem, all of those problems. It also comes with a plugin that allows for using the MVP pattern. MVP, basically, uh, it's a way of working very similar to, to for example, how uh, I don't know if you guys have used ever like ex the Express server in Node, how to use it. Um, basically, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's very simple. When you're doing an an API with with the Express, all you have to do is you have to say like for example you you declare these two variables here and then you say I want to do a GET request for my API to this endpoint. And then you can just answer whatever you want. If you're doing a POST request, you can do just app.post instead of get, and you would, again, put the endpoint. And then you would just respond whatever you want. It can be a JSON, it can be an XML, whatever you want. So our approach for this WordPress headless API, it's pretty much the same. Um, if you are familiar with Slim PHP, it will be the exact same thing. Slim is uh, an also a micro framework for APIs. It's very similar to Express, as you can see. It's just the same app.get and then the endpoint and then the function that will handle that particular API call. And you can respond whatever you want, um, a JSON or whatever. And if you are familiar with the Flask framework in Python, it will also be the same thing. You can see it here in the official documentation. In the getting started, you'll see how it's pretty much the same thing. Quick start, here it is, a minimal application. So in Flask is, let's see, let me see, here. So you just do app, route, and then you put the endpoint and the function that will take care of the API call. 
So with our WordPress API, it's going to be the exact same thing. Uh, but let me just first install WordPress so that we can get into that. As you can see, when the WordPress starts, it's going to, it should, let's give it a second because I'm not sure why, it should be showing the little baby and it doesn't. Let me see what's the problem. It's saying that it doesn't find the index. Let's see. Okay, I was I was saying when you refresh, it will show a little baby. Uh, that's a Foggy Academy mascot, and it says that if you see the screen, it's because you haven't run the installer. So let's do that. Let's run the installer, and uh, you will see how it will start installing WordPress, basically in just uh, a few steps. On the left side here, you can see the log for a patch. Uh, for any of you that doesn't know anything about a patch, a patch is basically the server uh, that PHP uses for for development or for production as well. Actually, um, a patch is just a server that um, hosts PHP. Like it's always the other languages don't have something like this. Uh, maybe Java. The Java language, not JavaScript, Java has an Apache server, it's called Apache Tomcat. So basically Apache is just a server and uh, when you, this this little script here, it's, it's in front of you because it's important. You shouldn't like ignore it. It will show always the, the, the problems that you find um, and the requests like to your API. Like you can see here that we, have, we got a 500, a 200, a 200. So my recommendation is when you have an error, come back here and uh, and see what the error was. Like for example, uh, if I refresh right now, you'll see how it's um, it's showing a bunch of things here. Look, a bunch. It's uh, a get request, and it was a two hundred. And uh, you can see that also there's a lot of things happening here. Don't worry about this. I I did refresh too soon. Let's wait until it finishes installing WordPress, and you'll see that here you have another another screen. I'll talk about this vlog in a in a couple of minutes a bit more. Just to finish explaining what the installation of WordPress is doing, uh, basically it install, you can use Composer for installing packages. Uh, it installed Monolog that is a login library. Um, it installed the WordPress Dash that is basically the library that is allowing us to use WordPress like like Node.js or like a Slim PHP or like Flask framework for microservices for, uh, for API endpoints and a bunch of other packages that are super cool and super useful. I think the most important one for you guys is to understand is this one, Advanced Custom Fields. Because this is a WordPress plugin, WordPress plugin, Advanced Custom Fields, that allows to enhance with uh, WordPress posts with new properties. Like for example, let's say that you are adding a new post and you want to add an, an image or a particular uh, an additional information into that post that is not just the title and the content maybe you want to add let's say the city in which it was uh, published you can do that with advanced custom fields but for us it will be like new properties in our objects uh, I'm going to do a small example of of a learning environment like a like an API for a learning management system that basically has courses and students and you'll see how you can add uh, custom types with that like properties custom properties into your into your model um, so I was saying that the WordPress installation is finished and it's telling you here that you have your URL this is my URL for my WordPress installation so if I command click or if you have a Windows you can control click and it will open a new URL with the WordPress installation this is a little explanation that I recommend that you always have like a quick um, quick links for you. It comes already with a small API as an example, but you can also like click here and it will take you to a tutorial on how to use, how to build the API uh, with a bunch of examples. The same examples that you will find in the bullet page, by the way. How to use uh, entities or custom post types, how to log in into your WordPress dashboard, uh, admin, like for example here, you can see that the, the password is Kitpod and git.1234.1234. So let's click here to log into the WordPress. We can just use that username and this password. And automatically we are in. 
And we already have a, a type, look, like WordPress has always posts because WordPress was built at the beginning to create a blog post, uh, not a blog post, a blog. So you can just have posts. Um, like for example, if I have a newspaper, I will be able, or if I have a company, I will be able to publish the news, the events and stuff like that. The media gallery, it's where you host all your images. Every time you're doing a post, um, you upload images to the, to the post. Like for example, I'm, I'm just typing something here and then if I wanna add a new image, I just click here and I look for the gallery or I for a new image and I can upload that image from my computer. And after I do that, it will become now part of my post, of course, when I update, it's now part of my post, but I can also come back and see it in my media gallery. Here it is, you see? So it's like a repo, a repository of images, videos, and PDFs, and or files. Then you have the pages. Uh, pages are, I think we're not gonna talk much about this. This is the front end for WordPress. When you're doing like a, like a website for your company and you wanna use WordPress 100%, for us, we're gonna be using React or a, a front end framework, so, we're just gonna use it as an API. We're gonna be using the posts, but not as post itself, more like as a custom post like this. Courses is like, you can see it like a subcategory of posts, that it's just courses, educational courses. And this is here because the boilerplate comes with this, but you can delete it easily. You can see here, for example, um, that you can create your own entities and custom post types. To do that, you create a line like this, where you specify the, that you wanna create a new course type. It's like a table in the database. And, and then who's gonna, what class or what object in PHP, it's gonna represent that course. So in our case, if you open Rego here, and then you open functions.php, you'll see that we have first here, this part here is just using Composer. Composer is the package manager for PHP. Very similar to how NPM works in front-end, Composer works in PHP. But then you have setup types, that is what I was talking about. Let's open that one for a second. And then in types, you have course. That's why you see course in the WordPress admin here, courses. Look, if I comment this, you'll see how probably this will go away. If I refresh, there's no courses anymore, you see? But if I uncomment, now I have the ability to create, delete, and update new courses. If I just click here, I'll be able to add a new course here. And let's say that my new course is gonna be uh, full stack web development. If you have, I'm just publishing it right now. And if you have, let's say you have a car dealership, then of course you're gonna be able, you're gonna wanna add, instead of a course, you're gonna be, you wanna add like, for example, cars, of course, it makes sense, right, car. And the class that represents a car, it's gonna, we're gonna call it car, and we're, we're gonna have to open here in source, the types, and we're gonna have to add, instead of course, or additionally, we're gonna have to add a car, like this. This is gonna be my car.php, and then here I'll just rename this to car. And that's it. And now if I refresh, I can manage now cars and courses. Look, if I click on cars, I have no cars right now, I can add a new car. And let's say that my car is Toyota. That simple, guys, that simple. You can manage your own custom information in WordPress. And if you wanna, for example, list all the cars you have, here you have Toyota, you see? So that's basically custom types. But what if I want to add new properties to the car? Let's say that I want to add the make to the car. For that, we have advanced custom fields here at the bottom. I was talking about that at the beginning. It's a, it's a, a plugin that comes in this particular installation of WordPress. It's called advanced custom fields in WordPress. I recommend uh, watching the video about it, reading a little bit about it because it's super cool and it allows you to add new properties to anything that you wanna match in WordPress. So let's say that I wanna add the make, the car make. So I'm just gonna come here into the WordPress uh, dashboard and I'm gonna go to fill groups and I'm gonna add new and I'm gonna say these are the card extended 
fields. You can call this how you want. I would recommend you call it like this because for the future, you're going to be able to find the card extended fields faster. And then you add a new field. And this field is going to be the make. And the, the field name, this is all lowercase because this is a programmatic ID. So, for example, if you are adding something else that has multiple words, like for example, let's say the, the car um, sale date. My recommendation is to put it like this, sale date. Always lowercase and using um, underscores instead of spaces. Don't do it like this because I think it's not going to work. Okay, so going back, we're going to do the make and then we're going to have make here. And when you're picking the type, you can pick a lot of things because WordPress is very cool on this, but I would recommend you pick a text or you can, yeah, I think text will be the best choice. And then that's it. You just publish your thing. You publish, and now the card has a make. So basically, when I go back to cars, if I want to edit Toyota, when I'm editing, I can here, of course, talk more about the car, like a general description. But if I scroll down, I should be able to see the custom type. Oh, my bad. No, I forgot one thing. I have to say in the custom fields, after I create the extended fields, I have to say that it applies to show this field group if post type is equal to car okay that's important because if not it's not going to show up and then update here or if you're creating for the first time it, it will not say update it will say more like create then you go back here to cars you edit and you will see how at the bottom i have my card extended fields and i can put the make uh, so i think it was the opposite right it's more i don't know let's say it's corolla okay so I have my Toyota Corolla now. So now that I have it, let's talk about APIs. Because you can man you can know now that you, you have an admin to manage your cars, you can create more cars, you can check here and you can bulk delete many cars at the same time, you can edit them here. But what if I wanna make my API? I wanna make my API. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to go to the functions.php again, and you'll find that you have setup API. That is pretty similar to setup types, but instead of defining new types, you're going to be defining your end endpoints. So let's open that one. Setup types. Here it is. You see how it has, oh my bad, setup API. You see that it has already like a bunch of examples. This is for you, for you to understand. So don't ignore this, please. So. What's the typical thing you want to do to any entity? You want to you wanna edit that entity. You want to delete that entity. You want to view it, right? So for the, the examples that you have here are for all of that. So for example, here in this one, this is how to get a single course. So if we want to replicate that for the car, we can just duplicate this. We're going to put it here. And you'll let's try to understand. Look, first the path. So the path is slash course and then slash id i know that this is a little bit cumbersome there's a bunch of symbols but what matters here is that this is an id and it's a digit right so wordpress is going to take care of converting that into a number and then you're saying that you, you want to control or like handle that api request using the sample controller get single course the sample controller is here sample controller and the method will be get single course. If we're gonna do our own, maybe we wanna have a new controller, right? So let's create a new one. And we're gonna call it the car controller. You can you don't have to call it controller, but I think it's better just to, to keep it standard. And then I'm gonna copy the the top part of this, like this, and then I'm gonna close my class, and then I'm gonna close my PHP. Actually, I don't have to close PHP here. I just can just leave it like that. And then I'm going to copy the get single course and I'm going to paste it here and understand it. So what is this doing? It's getting the, the ID from the request, right? And then it's fetching a course from that ID. I don't want to fetch courses. I want to fetch cars. So I got to replace that with a car. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's see how, let's see if it works. I'm going to close this. I'm going to call this car, of course, and then instead of sample controller, it's going to be car controller, and it's going to be get single car, 
or I can just call it get single. You know, I just have to match it here. It has to match, right? So that's it. Let's say, oops, I did it in sample controller, my bad. I have to do it in the other one, in car, in a car controller. So here I'm gonna make it get single, that's it. Oops, this is just car, not cars. I wonder why I had a, like a underline here. Yeah, that should work, let's see. Okay, so now I'm gonna start using my API. For that, we're gonna go back to the home, okay? visit site, here's our documentation, and we're gonna download this Postman client here. Postman is ideal for testing APIs. After you download and install Postman, you're gonna see something like this. Maybe you're gonna see it without any of these open. Let me see if I can close them all. Close all tabs. There it is. So how does it work? We're gonna press here in the plus, and here we're gonna be able to test our API endpoints. This one, it's going to be a get request to car ID. First, you know what? Let's do first get all cars. Let's get all the cars first. So it's going to be a get request again, but not to this weird ID. It's just going to be to car, and that's it. And then we're going to say get all instead of saying get single, all the cars. Then I'm going to come here into the, this one we don't need anymore. I'm gonna come here into the setup API. Ah, I was there, so it's not there, it's in the car controller, yeah. And then I'm gonna replace this, and I'm gonna say get all, and I don't need an ID, and then I'm just gonna say all. You know, all the cars, I want all the cars. And then I'm gonna put it like this, post, posts, and then I'm gonna return Actually, no, this is more like the result. And then return results dot, uh, dot is, this is the equivalent to a dot in PHP. It's just an arrow like this, as an arrow with a hyphen instead of an equal. And then here I'm gonna say posts. And then I think that's it. Let's test it. Um, I'm gonna copy this as my API endpoint my host, my bad, and then I'm gonna make here, I'm gonna say, um, I have to copy it from here, my bad. Uh, it's gonna be like this, this URL here, but instead of course car. How do I know that? I know that because first it's gonna be WPJSON, that's a standard, like all WordPress APIs start with WPJSON. Then my, where it says sample API, that's really here, look. It says here, sample API. That's part of the setup API, the first thing that you do here. You're gonna put a version of the API and then you're gonna put the name of the API. And that's here. Um, you see the name of the API and then the version. So we're gonna copy the exact same thing, but instead of cores, we are doing car, uh, cars. So let's do it. Let me delete this for slash and then here I'm gonna put car. And let's see what happens. It says unexpected return. Probably I forgot a semicolon. Probably, yeah, no, semicolon, so let's just add it here. Okay, what else? Let's try again. Cannot declare class sample controller. I, I forgot to rename the class from the inside. So here it's car controller. What else? Let's do, there it is. So I'm bringing all the cars. You see, this is the Toyota. Here it is, all the cars. This is just one car, and the car has all these properties. Maybe you're thinking, oh my God, but I, I didn't add all those properties. I only add the make, and the make is not even here. That's crazy, right? So remember that in, in WordPress, everything is a blog post. So he's gonna think that you wanna blog post about cars, and it's gonna add a post date, a comment, like the content of the post, a bunch of things that we may don't like. Uh, there's a way of overriding this, and in the sample controller, you have all the examples. Like we already did this one for get single code. Actually, we haven't tested, but we did it. We did this one and we tested. We did it for car. So for get single cores, let's do that one. Let's see, is this one is the number 10. So if I wanna do the car, I wanna get the car number 10, right? Let's see what happens. 
I got it. Look, card 10. And I didn't get an array like before. I got the actual card 10. And it was because I already had my endpoint. Look, I had it here. So car and then the car ID. And then get single. And get single, it's basically doing a get with that ID that it got from the request. So that's get uh, get all cars here. This one, I'm sorry. And this one. Okay, now let's try doing a post to create a new car. Okay, so that's going to be something like this. We're going to duplicate this and we're going to do post and we're going to do car. And let me show you another trick. You don't have to put everything in the car controller. You can just remove this from here and create a new function automatically. And that function will handle the request from here. Like you don't have to do it from here. Maybe you think this is too many steps. Actually, if you think about it, uh, Node.js does it like this with, with a function right away. The same way as Slim, as Slim PHP and the same way as Flask. They just have the methods here. Of course, you will have to copy this. Well, you don't have to, but if you want to access the request, you will have to paste this here and you will have to import that by saying use and then the name of the class. I want to use that. And that way, it doesn't tell me that it doesn't exist anymore. So let's try that. Let's try the post from here. Okay. So if I want to create a new car, let's see how in the set in the sample controller we have it as an example. It would be this one. Look, create course. We're going to create a car. So let's do the same thing. I'm going to copy only the content from it. I'm going to put it here in my endpoint. And what is this doing? Let's do it line by line. So the first line is getting or like um, I'm going to get the body JSON. Because remember that when you do a post, you have to specify in the body you have to put raw and then you have to put JSON because you have to pass a JSON with the card that you want to add. Like for example, my card is going to have a title, no, not a title, a name, or not a name, a make that it's Toyota, actually it's Corolla, and a brand that it's Toyota. Okay, so we're going to pass, oh my bad, brand, okay. I'm going to pass this to post and then car. I don't have to specify the ID because I, I don't even have the car, right? I'm creating that car. So the endpoint should be just to car. We have to match that in the in the URL. Let's see. Yeah, it's a post to just car without the weird ID, just to car. And I'm going to comment this for a second because I want to show you how you can do it like little by little. If you want to see what you got from the body, you can just do here. Um, print R. This is a very cool method, print R, because it will print whatever. You know, even if it's an array, it will print it. And then I'm gonna die. I don't, I don't have to die actually. Let's just, yeah, I don't have to die. That's an odd word. Uh, so let's test it. I'm just gonna send it and look, look what we got. We got the actual, if you press raw, it's, it's easier to read it when you press raw. Here it is. Look, we got the same JSON. We got it as an std class so that means that if i do for example here body make it will probably print the make look corolla so whatever i put here if i remove the make it's gonna tell me probably that it doesn't know what make is let's see not it, nothing look emptiness yeah so let's put back the make and you'll see how it's showing the make now so whatever I put in this JSON and the post request, I can get it by doing request.getBody and then doing a JSON encode of that body. And that will be here. And then of course, if I'm creating a new car, I would have to, let's put it as the, po the body make. I'm gonna put it here. And then let's see, this is a car, of course. I don't have the car uh, object here, so I'm gonna have to import it as well. So to import that, we're going to do use, I think it's Riga, because it's the name of this folder. Uh, Riga, and then types, yeah, and then car, exactly, and then semicolon. Okay, I'm creating a new car, and now let's see if it works. 
I'm gonna send it. We got the ID is 13. And let's see if we fetch for all the cars now. Let's do a fetch for all the cars. We should get the Corolla that we got first. Uh, not the first one, the Toyota that we got, and then the Corolla. Let me add a, a car that it's not a Toyota Corolla. Let me add a, let's say, um, I don't know, a Tesla. Yeah, a Tesla model. Three. Let's add it. Ah, let, wait a second. I wanna stop. Remove this print from here because it's weird. And we should return a JSON, right? Let's say JSON. Decode encode. Encode, and then let's add a JSON here. I don't know, like result. Array in PHP, everything is an array, right? So if you wanna make, I think we can do it like this as well. Let's see. Yeah, actually we can, my bad. So we're gonna call this um, ID, yeah. And then arrow this, and then we close the square bracket and the curly bracket. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna just add the Tesla. So we got back this, that it's weird. Maybe I don't have to encode it again. Let me just remove the encoding. And I'm gonna add it again, and we're gonna have two Teslas. So let me add the model, the model one, model, model two. I don't remember the, the the different types of Teslas that there are. So let's send this. There we go. Look, we got the ID 15. So if we fetch for all the cars again, you're gonna get model six, collapse. You're gonna get model three, collapse, and you're gonna get the Corolla that we got from the beginning and like all the others. And of course, uh, if I wanna fetch, for example, for the Model 3, I can just do here 14, send, and we got the 14 that it's a Model 3 only, no other car. So just one more thing. Uh, if we wanna delete, it's the same thing, right? If we wanna implement a delete for the card 14, uh, we'll copy, we'll, we'll make, um, let's make a new request here. It's gonna be a delete. It has to have the weird ID because we're going to delete a specific one. In this case, we're going to delete the 18th. And then we're going to remove this controller from here as well because we don't need it. And we're going to put a function that it's going to receive the ID. So I got to copy that from an, a sample like this one. It's going to receive the ID. And instead of fetching for that, it's just going to delete. It's going to card that delete that ID. And let's see what happens. I'm gonna delete the 18, the 14, delete to this one. One, let me do it in a new, in a new, because uh, I don't wanna. Yeah, this will become the delete, and this one will become the to fetch all of them. Yeah. Okay. So let's do it first. I'm gonna send the delete to the card 14. One, two, three. Boom. The use statement on compound name will has no effect in blah blah. What does this mean? Oh, yeah, right, my bad. It's, I forgot to put this in the endpoint. Okay. Let's try again. One, two, three. Boom. The use statement has no effect, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing in the line number three. Okay. That's okay. I guess I don't mind. Ah, it's just a warning. Uh, maybe I don't have to do this here. I'm just going to delete it so that the warning doesn't show. It's saying false because I already deleted it, right? But if I, if I type with another one, let me get all the cars. You'll see that the 15 is still here, so let's do it. I'm gonna delete 15. It says true because it deleted it successfully, but if I do it again, it will say false. So you see how now we don't have 15. If I fetch for all of them again, it got the 13 only and the eight, the 10 only. I only have two cars now. I deleted both Teslas. So that's how you implement the delete. Uh, I hope I didn't confuse you by by doing it both ways, like one way with the with the function here and the other way with the with a separate class controller. But I think this one's more organized, but this one is so light and easy that maybe you're gonna be seduced by it. Uh, I think as long as you organize yourself in some way, you can use either. And then last, I think I haven't done, I did, Create. I, oh yeah, I, I haven't shown like the, the custom fields. I haven't shown how to do that. Yeah, so 
Let me just go to the admin and in the WordPress admin, I'm going to add a new, let's me add a new, a new custom field to the car. And I'm going to call it the, a new field here. And I'm going to call it the brand. Yeah, the brand. That's it. Update. So we have make and brand. Now we have a bunch of cars. Well, we'll we have two here. I think it's not fair to call it Corolla anymore. So I'm just going to change it. I'm going to make it uh, this the car. My first car. I think it's better like this. And then I put here the make. It's going to be uh, model six. And the brand is going to be a Tesla. Update. And then the other one that we have here, we're going to call it my second car my second car it's gonna be a let's say a nissan uh tundra i think there's a tundra i don't remember nissan okay i'm gonna update this so we have my first car and my second car right now let's fetch them all if we fetch them like this it's gonna show both but it's gonna have all this gibberish that we don't like. So let's say that we wanna make it slim. Let's overwrite the get all and let's make it smaller. Um, so we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna remove this from here. We're gonna add a function like always. And then of course, let me put this here. And then we're gonna do this. We're gonna say result. And we're going to say cars or car, I think, dot all, right? And then we're going to say for each result posts as car. We're going to say, uh, and we're going to declare a new array. That we're going to call cars, maybe all cars. That's an empty array. And then we're gonna say for each one, I wanna I wanna add to the all cards array. I wanna add only the car. I wanna make a new car, right? So it's gonna be a new one. And it's gonna have an ID that it's going to match the car ID. And then I'm gonna have a make that it's gonna it's gonna match. And for this, we're going to copy again from the examples because I don't remember the exact syntax and I don't even want to remember it. It's going to be this little thing here. It's called get field, get field. And then we're going to get the make from this car in particular. And then after we finish adding all those cars, we're going to return all cars. My bad, I put cards, it's supposed to be cars. So here it is. Okay, let's see if it works. We're gonna do this fetch again to all the cars. And we're getting the cards now. Oops, my bad. Syntax error and expect column number 29. So 29. Yeah, I think it's double column. Yeah, it's a double column. There it is. Look. Oh bye. My the IDs are all wrong. Let's see if we can get them. Ah yeah, it's because I think in WordPress the ID has to be caps. So that's my bad. So look, we have the ID that is a model six, and we can add also the brand. And we're gonna make here brand. And let's see if it works. One, two, three. We got model six Tesla and Nissan Tundra. That's amazing, right? It's so simple to do this API with WordPress. And that I think that's pretty much it. Uh, there's a uh, documentation, and I, I strongly encourage you to see the examples that come here in the in the car in the sample controller because they're gonna help you a lot. And uh, you can send me a message to on Twitter to Ale Sanchez R if you have any question, or you can also write me on Slack if you are part of the Four Geeks Academy team uh, students. Peace. Bye-bye.